HTML syntax can help you organize your web page content nicely, but only up to a point. HTML-only pages can be pleasant and easy to read, which is hugely important. But after a while, they all do tend to look the same. Cascading style sheets, known universally as CSS, aren't really sheets. And it can take some work to figure out what cascading means. But the markup standard adds real power to your web development work. What CSS actually does is allow you to separate your content from its presentation. HTML handles the content, while CSS adds more sophisticated control over the way that content behaves. Beyond managing formatting, CSS also lets you modularize resources across complex websites, providing uniform presentation across multiple web pages. That's because a single CSS document can be referenced by as many web pages as you like. In fact, I remember how many years ago, in a particularly lazy moment, I once referenced some large, well-known website's CSS document from a page on one of my own small sites. Because I couldn't be bothered to figure out how they produced the effect I liked, I just linked to their code. I'm pretty sure that was completely legal, by the way. But I definitely don't recommend you try it. It'll only be a matter of time before they make some changes to their style sheet that breaks your site. There are two ways to incorporate CSS code. You can simply save all your markup to a file using the .css extension that's accessible to your HTML files, or you can add it between style tags within the head section of your HTML. This HTML page shows how both approaches work. The link rel tag shows the style sheet attribute and points to a CSS file called main.css that's in the web root directory on this server. In this case, of course, the link is commented out, so browsers won't actually read it. In fact, there is no such file here at the moment, at least. As I've said, the second approach is to place your CSS code within the style tags, and that's what we've done here. The opening tag has a type attribute of text slash CSS, although I'm not sure how necessary that is anymore. Keeping it there certainly can't hurt, though. This CSS has two sections. The first will apply to all P, paragraph elements that might exist in your HTML. There are two style definitions within the curly braces. The text color should be red, and the text alignment should be centered. Notice how each definition ends with a semicolon. That's really important, and leaving those out will break stuff. Notice also how we can refer to colors by name. We'll see more examples of that later, but be aware that you can also identify colors by their hexadecimal codes. The next line is just a comment. In general, of course, you want this kind of note to make your code more readable and understandable. But I added it here specifically to show you how commenting works in CSS, using a forward slash and an asterisk at the start, and an asterisk and forward slash at the end. HTML style comments won't work here. This style will apply to any unordered list within your HTML, using blue as the text color and aligning text to the left. There's obviously a lot more you can do here, and of course, you can apply styles to all kinds of HTML elements, but we've got to start somewhere, right? The actual HTML is further down in the body section. To show you how our CSS will work, I've written some text within a regular paragraph and a couple of bullet points between the UL tags. Let's open that HTML page and take a look. Well, the colors and the alignment are correct. It isn't much, but it is ours. Take a couple of minutes right now to create something similar for yourself. The code from all these demos is available here, so you can use it if you like, but I would still recommend you type everything out from scratch. I guarantee you that it'll help you learn better.